What's going on with this video? Today we're going to be doing another Chelsea Lone Army Roundup video. The World Cup is here. I think this is the perfect time to do our second Chelsea Lone Army Roundup. Left a couple of loanees off the list, but if you don't hear their names, it just means that there's really nothing to report on them. They haven't really been playing and there's no real specific reason for it. But yeah, these videos take a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of editing, all of that. So please make sure to like the video to support this one because they take a long time. And make sure to watch the video up until the very end because the more interesting loanees will be at the very end. Like your Hudson Odoi's, like your Levi Cole like your Ethan Ampadu, so make sure to stick around until the very end. But there's a lot of loanies to go through, so let's just get straight into it. Right, let's start with the loanies that have an option to buy in their contract. So let's start with Nathan Baxter. Obviously, he's at Hull City where we have a lot of Chelsea loanies, and he's played every single game since our last Chelsea and Army roundup video. Initially, he found himself out the side because he dislocated his finger in pre-season, so Matt Ingram was in goal. But ever since he's come to the side, as expected, he's a very, very good goalkeeper. He's kept his place in the side, had a number of really good performances, really important saves. He's only kept one clean sheet since the last Chelsea Lone Army roundup video, but really that's just because Hull are so poor. They've got their new coach, as I said, in Liam Rosenwar, who we'll get on to later in relation to the other Chelsea. Loanies. I've got some exclusive news on Harvey Vale, but the new coach has a ball playing philosophy that he's implemented, so that's an interesting dynamic change for Nathan Baxter because under the last coach, a lot of long balls, but that is good to see because it only helps develop their game. But it's been a very good period for Nathan Baxter. Right next up, we've got the infamous Timur Bakayoko once again, and I could literally relay the video I put on the last Chelsea and Army roundup video because it's the exact same situation. He played 11 minutes in one appearance since the 17th of January in 2022, hasn't made a single appearance since, and if he makes one more appearance, then AC Milan have to activate their obligation to buy so you won't be seeing him for the rest of the season. Maybe there's a deal struck in January where he gets to leave by mutual agreement because to be honest, as much as Bakayoko may not actually be a footballer, I do feel quite bad for him to just be sitting on the bench and wasting his career. Next up, we've got Malang Saar and it really just goes from bad to worse. Malang Saar's made, made two appearances since the last Chelsea and Army roundup video. He wasn't performing that well anyway. In one of them, he scored an own goal and the other one, he was subbed at half time. So it's not going well for Malang Saar. They have a 13 million option to buy. Let's really hope he turns up his performances so they actually activate that option to buy. Right next up, we've got our favourite of the loanees with an option to buy and obviously that is the infamous fan favourite Romelu Lukaku. Now, the only thing that's happened since our last Chelsea and Army roundup video was he came back from an injury, got a goal on his return and then got injured again. Now he's been called up for Belgium for the World Cup so it seems like he'll be back for that but yeah, please don't come back Romelu, we don't need you at our club. Right, now we're into the low knees that might actually matter because they don't have an option to buy, could have a future at Chelsea in theory and we're going to start with Jamie Cumming. Obviously he's at MK Dons, MK Dons are doing terrible this season, they've slowly improved since the last Chelsea and Army roundup video. I think they're just about to get out of the relegation zone if they win their game in hand. Jamie Cumming himself in this period has picked up three clean sheets. He's been really, really solid overall. I'd still say he's MK Don's player of the season so far, making crucial saves. He did have one absolute howler a couple of games ago where he pretty much just let it through his hands. But to be honest, when you're under that much pressure, game on, game on, because MK Don's are so bad, it's bound to happen. So Jamie Cumming, it's been a good low move in that he's making saves, but really you want to progress by building out, playing with the ball, playing in better sides and going for promotions rather than being in the relegation zone of League One. As I spoke about in the first roundup video, it is a shame how this low move has gone because Jamie Cumming got a really, really positive loan spell at MK Dons last season, was in the playoffs with MK Dons last season. You thought that he'd progress into the championship as a natural progression that goalkeepers do, but unfortunately that championship move didn't come about. He went back to MK Dons and MK Dons have fallen off a cliff going from a promotion candidate to an absolute relegation candidate. So let's see what happens here. Last season when he was at a relegation candidate in League One in Gillingham, he managed to get that January move to MK Dons to a promotion side. So hopefully in January he can cancel his loan move and go to a side that could actually get promoted and start progressing his career. Right, next up we've got a player that has actually improved since the last video, very drastically to be honest, and that is Henry Lawrence. Again, also at MK Dons, which is why I've grouped the two together. Initially at the beginning of the season he was playing very well, then had to spell out the sides, and finally he's come back into the side. He got his chance against Walsall, I believe in the EFL trophy, but I may have got that wrong, and he took his chance perfectly. He came on and scored an outside the box banger, one goal of the month for MK Dons, and since then he's continued and continued to improve. Finally got that rowing back spot over Oya Goku, who I've spoken about before the MK Dons fans hate him. I don't know why the Dons manager kept playing him. He's absolutely awful, but thankfully he's realised how much better Henry Lawrence is. Henry Lawrence is now a mainstay in the side. He's picked up six clean sheets in his last seven games for MK Dons, which is absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, just a constant threat down the right-hand side. It's really good to see Henry enjoying his football again and playing consistently. Next up, we've got the six foot nine finish machine in Lucas Bergstrom. Six foot nine is absolutely ridiculous, but that is what he is. And honestly, there's not much more to report on. If you saw the first roundup video, it's 
it's just more of the same crucial saves in most games he's so big that he makes so many big saves and honestly he's not bad with his feet for his height he's quite good at distribution loves a bit of sweeper keeping and even in one game when Peterborough were chasing a goal at the last second he went up for a corner and he would have had your money on him necking it in being six foot nine but actually they went down the other end and Lucas Bergstrom had to run all the way to his goal and then they knocked it in at the last minute it was honestly heartbreaking to see him run all the way back and then still concede but that wasn't his fault at all it's still been a really good low move for Lucas Bergstrom to get a low move from the academy straight into league one is absolutely unheard of honestly that is ridiculous I heard apparently I've been told exclusively that the reason for that is if any of you care is because Peterborough actually tried to get Jamie Cumming but they couldn't afford Jamie Cumming someone in their staff had worked with Nathan Baxter in the past so knew that the common production line of goalkeepers was very good and the next one in line was Lucas Bergstrom so they managed to snap him up but honestly getting a league one low move because if you look at it in perspective right now Lucas Bergstrom is almost ahead of Jamie Cumming in terms of what kind of club he's at and how he's performing because Peterborough at the top of league one and the fact that he's done that within a season and Jamie Cumming's done that in about three seasons from memory it's honestly incredible but he deserves it really really good performances and next one a group two players together because they're both Chelsea Academy strikers Brian Fiabema and Jaden Wareham Brian Fiabema is at Forest Green Rovers right at the bottom of league one and Jaden Wareham is at Leighton Orient right at the top of league two however their seasons are going pretty similar to be honest Fiabema has had a few starts since the last roundup video but none of them really came to anything he hasn't scored or anything and now he's just really warming the bench which is a shame to see I'm sure we'll get more opportunities considering Forest Green Rovers are at the bottom of the table they've got to try different stuff but it's really not looking good and Jaden Wareham is unfortunately is a club that is at the top of league two because they don't really mix around stuff if it's working but he has been playing very well only three appearances since the last roundup video two starts one of them was actually against Chelsea under 21s in the EFL trophy and honestly he does deserve more game time I see Orient fans say it all the time in their comments to start where him start where him and hopefully he gets a chance soon because he's a really really prolific striker we're moving into the championship now and we've got Dujon Sterling obviously on loan at Stoke now it's been very up and down for him at Stoke in terms of his performances they've actually been very good he started off as a as a left wing back then moved to right back but then kind of cemented himself as a right wing back they finally found their system he was doing really really well if you guys remember me talking about Dujon Sterling last season it was a lot of he's playing very very well especially defensively but attacking output is not there now to be fair half of that was to do with Blackpool style of play they just really weren't that good they weren't getting forwards that much and they very much focused on the defensive side which is one of the reasons why Dujon went to Stoke this season a very attacking side he wanted to show to people that he can still attack because in his academy days he was a very very prolific attacker constantly getting goals constantly getting assists and sometimes even pushing Reese James out the side and we've seen that since he's gone to Stoke really really good constantly creating chances lofting balls over the top getting down the right hand side dribbling like we know you do if you've watched Dujon Sterling you know what I mean about his dribbling he's absolutely electric so fast you can't really stop him when he gets going but unfortunately he's had a few stumbling blocks he picked up an ankle injury which forced him off at half time in one of the games he was out for around two weeks then he came back and in the next game he picked up a knock again and then he missed the last game and that was the last game before the World Cup when I'm recording this so obviously he'll have the break with the World Cup and then come back after that hopefully completely free of injuries and continue his good form continue getting attacking output and next up we've got one of the big successes of the Lone Army this season that's Ian Martin and obviously you guys will remember from the first round of videos playing very very well started off better than ever scoring a goal in his first game got an assist in his fourth game then it slightly slowed down obviously got that red card which went all over social media because he basically got tackled and absolutely whiplashed the guy when it came out of nowhere and destroyed him which was very silly but also quite funny to see and then since then there was a couple games where he's a bit shaky but since the last roundup video he's really really turned it up been on such good form for Burnley and Burnley in general been on such good form they are three points clear on top of the championship Vincent Company's got them playing a beautiful ball playing style honestly I'd liken it to Pep Guardiola obviously it's not the same as Man City's quality but the way they play is very very similar always an emphasis on keeping the ball and their their fullbacks constantly invert especially Ian Martin he picks up midfield positions constantly when you watch Jao Cancelo inverting into the middle or even John Stone sometimes that's exactly what Ian Martin is doing forming a three-man with his fullbacks in midfield and it's really fascinating to see and good to see him have different facets to his game tactically and it allows him to touch the ball constantly his touches are incredible most games you see him get over a hundred touches a game which is absolutely ridiculous especially for a left back but he also gets up and down the left hand side links up really well with Bernie's left wingers so Rory who's an excellent player and honestly it's just been a really really good time Martin has been playing really well Bernie have been playing really well and it's only going to get better the one thing I'd say about Ian Martin which is a constant when we talk about Martin is obviously he is playing in a four and defensively he's still a small liability now once again this isn't with tackles or anything like that it's also kind of just his mentality I feel like sometimes he needs to realize and I think he may have realized of recent because it let him down against Sheffield United when I think Burnley lost 5-2 that he needs to start closing down crosses quicker you can't let crosses come into the box onto the and sometimes he's a bit lazy in defending those but I'm sure Vincent Company, being the incredible prolific defender that he was has 
have spoken to Martin about this and it's something that we haven't seen in his last game so hopefully he's worked on that no more defensive liabilities we'll be blocking crosses and this low move is going to perfection next up we've got a player that unfortunately there's not much to report on and that is Tino Andrin he hasn't played a single game since September 17th before the first roundup video and he's out still with the same problem he unfortunately picked up glandular fever and that has caused him to miss almost two months of football obviously I wish him all the best I've been told now that he is fully back but obviously that has come at the wrong time with the World Cup break coming now but at least we'll have this period until the next game while everyone's at the World Cup to regain fitness and be fully back for Huddersfield's next game they've really missed him Huddersfield in general are on really poor form near the bottom of the championship hopefully Tino Andring can turn that around but to be honest I don't think Huddersfield are going to do very well this season it could turn out to be a poor loan for Tino but what's important is what happens to him not what Huddersfield so hopefully he comes up back with a bang obviously he scored a brace earlier in the season you see the quality that Tino has but he needs to start rebuilding that fitness after the fever but next up we've got two players that once again are grouped together and that is Xavier Simons and Harvey Vale I've got some exclusive news on Harvey Vale and in general these two loans haven't exactly gone to perfection let's start with Xavier Simons really there's no excuse for this one he's made the match day squad once for Hull's senior team and he came off the bench for that game I thought that was a positive step he looked all right when he came on but since then he's just been demoted once again to the under 21s scored one goal for the under 21s but nothing else to really report on and then we've got Harvey Vale who made one start for Hull earlier in the season then went on an international break with England under 20s captain them to a trophy which was good to see but he got injured during that international break was out for around three maybe four weeks came back and has played two games with the under 21 since to rebuild fitness now with Harvey there is a bit more context to add to the story it's not that he's just been thrown to the under 21s and isn't going to be involved I've been told that he had a chat with Liam Rosenwa Hull City's new coach very recently to talk about his progression and I've been told that Rosenwa really likes him he plans on using him after the World Cup break and everything is good that everything is working out he's going to be used after so that is positive to see unfortunately I don't have anything on Xavier Simons we hope it's the same situation I'm sure he's had a chat with him but I have been told that Harvey Vale's had a chat with the new head coach and everything's positive and the head coach actually really likes Harvey so hopefully he keeps getting involved he obviously did play the under 21s as I said and did score for the match sheet which is positive to see so hopefully he comes back with a bang after the World Cup break but just in general a quick note on Hull City this is a dangerous situation for the Chelsea to weigh up especially with Xavier Simons considering I don't know his situation very well Hull City have a huge huge squad and only more of them are going to come back after the World Cup a lot of them were injured and they just really packed up the numbers to try and be as compact as possible because the championship season is really really tough there's games two games every single week so they really packed up their squad to make sure they had good squad depth but unfortunately this has effects on players like Harvey Vale and Xavier Simons where they're going to lose out on match day squads because there's just too many players for Hull to deal with and maybe they're going to pay less attention to a low knee because they don't get them for the next season so it is a situation to watch out for I wouldn't be surprised if one or maybe two of them get recalled in January if it's not working out but it seems quite positive with Harvey Vale considering he's had a talk with the manager so we've got a player that's really really turned around his loan with that is Ethan Ampadu one of my favorite players to report on he's improved so so much he's in a Spezia side that once again aren't very good I don't think his loan move was very well picked out he could have done much much better than Spezia last season he was in a similar situation with Venezia who weren't very good I don't think Spezia are going to get relegated but they're still towards the bottom end of Serie A just like Venezia was but just on Ethan Ampadu he's been doing really really well obviously he started off as a right center back mixed bag of performances were good in some games bad in other games and I thought right center back wasn't really position for him and I still back that and he's been slowly transitioning into midfield but you have to give it to him at right center back he's also himself taking it upon himself to improve and he's playing well at right center back too came up against one of the most dangerous wingers in the world right now and Raphael Leal so many Chelsea fans called for him well Ethan Ampadu pocketed him absolutely pocketed him he was brilliant against AC Milan and then the next game he was even better against Udinese he played the first half as a right center back absolutely brilliant and then the second half as a midfielder and I'm sure most of you guys saw it but he pulled off an absolutely beautiful assist in the first half from right center back picked up the ball stole off a player dribbled into midfield and spotted a pass on the left hand side a lofted chip through ball perfectly placed and the player got it and it was actually a very nice finish so Ethan Ampadu has only improved in his last game against Hellas Verona he played in midfield which was good to see as I've said many times that is definitely definitely his best position and if it's not midfield at central center back not even right center back so to see him performing at right center back in a poor side you really have to give it to him he's really trying but the big thing is he's going to Qatar with Wales obviously not a surprise at all he's huge for them been a regular ever since he was really 17 and hopefully has a really good tournament although I do think England are in the same group so I hope he doesn't have too good of a tournament and knock England out but that is really positive to see him in Qatar hopefully with a slightly better team than he has in Spezia but Ethan Ampadu I'll tip my hat off to you unfamiliar position not in a good team but he hasn't complained pocketed Rafael Leal getting assists versus Udinese switching between roles in games the manager himself said Ampadu is proving to be more and more important for this team we will try to exploit all his qualities to the full both technical and character and he also said that he has great ability 
ability to interpret both midfield and defensive roles to the best of his ability. So high praise for his manager, switching roles in games, really, really positive from Ethan Ampadu. All right, we've got the big man now, Levi Cole, and thank God I didn't film this video one week ago because it would have been the same old Levi Cole hasn't been given a chance, Levi Cole hasn't been given a chance. Well, finally, he's been given his chance, and no surprise, exactly what I've been saying, how much quality this guy has. One chance, he's immediately thrust into the team. He finally got his chance in a Carabao Cup game versus Arsenal at the Emirates. Big occasion. Arsenal basically haven't lost this whole season. They're top of the Premier League. Levi Cole comes in, finally gets his chance in a Cup game and pulls off an absolute masterclass. Brighton fans were saying he was definitely man of the match. I think Tarek Lamptey just about pipped him because he did bag the winning goal. So let's still give it to Levi Cole because the winning goal tax. But Levi's been absolutely brilliant. He's had to wait his chance. A lot of people chatting absolute bollocks on his name, saying he's not that good, can't even get a game for Brighton. Well, in reality, Brighton were just performing really, really well under Graham Potter and they actually are performing very, very well under De Zerbe. They have a really settled back three in Veltman, Webster and Dunk. Very experienced players. I haven't let De Zerbe down so it was always going to be hard for Cole to get that chance but the level-headed amongst us knew that you just had to wait for that chance. It didn't speak on his quality and that's been proven. Him coming in against Arsenal being absolutely brilliant, pulling off a 3-1 win I believe it was against Arsenal and then getting trusted the next game to make his first Premier League start against Aston Villa. Just like that, one chance and he's straight into the Premier League and he was very, very good against Aston Villa. Obviously, they did lose 2-1 I believe but the performance speaks for itself. Look up comps on Twitter. You can watch him play constantly trying to progress the ball had the most progressive attempted progressive passes completed progressive passes and distances progressed the ball out of all the Brighton team it really was absolutely brilliant completed 10 long balls it's your classic Levi Cole game if you've ever watched him constantly trying to progress the ball and what I love to see is firstly first Premier League star 19 years old and not scared to impose himself he knew that if he made one mistake he was out that Brighton side forever but he still decided to play his game wait on the ball make the opponent move and then pick a pass in between the lines that is classic Levi Cole Cole and it worked so well for Brighton in that game obviously he did get unlucky for Aston Villa's goal Ing scored and it did deflect off Levi but honestly I don't blame him for that if anything I praise him because McAllister got caught on the edge of the box then Lewis Dunk slid in and failed and Levi actually made a very good block he just got unlucky that it went off the inside of his leg and went in it's not his fault at all and then maybe he should have got the equaliser at the end of the game he did have a free header that he should have scored off but if you're judging defenders on not scoring a goal then I think that's a bit too far anyone who watched that game would have seen a really really positive performance now it's on deserve to reward him for these games. Obviously, there's a gap until the World Cup. There's a break. Hopefully, he can go away with De Zerbe on whatever training camp they have, impress him, and actually become a regular star of Brighton. His regular minutes in the Premier League is honestly going to be so good for his development. Right, we've got the big man now, Callum hudson Adoy. I obviously leave this guy always until last because he is pretty much a first-team player that has gone on loan. Now, since the last round-up video, Xabi Alonso has come in as the new coach, and that's been so, so positive. Leverkusen were playing so bad at the beginning of the season under their manager. I think his name was Sione. They've won their last three Bundesliga league of games all in a row which is so positive to see i believe one of them was against union berlin who was second in the table at that point so that was so good i think they won five nil but hudson odoi in general once again it's a similar story and it's a bit annoying to report this but he has been playing well he genuinely has been playing well every single time he plays he links up play so well constantly threads people through with through balls it's one of his best things and his dribbles have been really good on the turn constantly completing three or four dribbles a game which is so positive to see something that he wanted to improve on at leverkusen be confident be that academy cho that we know who's not scared to take on players and we've seen that and he's been really creative been unlucky with a couple goals and assists obviously had a lot of disliked goals and assists earlier in the season but he did get his big goal in the Champions League versus Atletico Madrid which was huge it played a part in them qualifying for the Europa League and actually knocking out Atletico Madrid from Europe in general which was incredible but I'm going to be honest you still want to see more we need to start seeing actual goals and assists now he has talking about it himself he said that he had a chat with Xabi Alonso Xabi Alonso was telling him that he needs that killer instinct to run in the box and score goals so hopefully that's only something that can improve and I do agree with people who will say no matter how many times I talk about his performances if he's not scoring goals it's not really relevant and that is true he needs to start adding goals now no excuses the one good thing to see is that he has been playing a variety of roles he's gone from left wing attacking mid and even played as an eight for a portion of a match recently under Alonso and he's been doing really really well genuinely really involved in play but Callum I'm going to be honest with you get them goals and assists coming because you're in the Bundesliga you need to start stat padding one more thing to add on Callum is that he did actually reject a call up to the World Cup to play for Ghana instead it seems that he's going to be focusing his sights on England because he clearly backs himself to go back to those levels where he was being called up to England and maybe it's linked to him wanting to stay with Leverkusen and go on their camp I think they go into America during the World Cup break try and cement his place work under Alonso in a more focused training session environment which obviously is good to see to see how focused he is the new segment I'm going to add to these Chelsea and Army roundup videos is a very quick segment I'm going to say who the player of this period has been for me without a doubt it has to be Ian Martin Ethan Ampadu is a very very close second but Ian Martin being at the top of the championship with Burnley 
so key to the style that Vincent Company wants to employ and he's been really really good for Bernie so there's only really one option Ian Martin is the Chelsea Loney of the month there you go I do hope you enjoyed this video once again these videos take ages to do so much research there's so many Chelsea Loney's to go through so if you could just make sure to drop a like on this video subscribe to get me close to 2,000 subscribers drop a comment down below on which Loney you're most excited about which one will have an impact on Chelsea in the future maybe get into the first team let me know in the comments and I will see you next time